Hey guys, welcome back to Gaming for Your Sins. Uh, in this video, I'll show you the basics of mapping for Half-Life 1 or Quake using Jackhammer. If you don't have Jackhammer set up, I've got good news for you. I made a video about it, go check it out. All right, let's start off by creating a new map. It'll offer to make a room for you, but I don't like to use that, so let's close out of that. And it'll hand us an empty level, like a blank canvas, ready for us to bring life and meaning to it. Let's put in some level geometry. Select the block creation tool, and let's do what it was born to do. Drag it on the grid to your right. Look carefully, and you'll see it appears on all the other grids. These are all the different views of your level, top, front, and side. It would look kind of like this. To look at your level from the 3D view, you can click on the top left part and press Z. Now you can use WASD and the mouse to noclip around your level to take a look at it. So we've got a box with white dashed lines, but it's not real yet. To make it real, right click it and press create object. Now the cube actually means something. You can click on it and drag it around. You'll notice that it's locked to the grid, whatever that may be set to. It tends to be a good idea to stick to the grid, or else your map will become an absolute clusterfuck and be completely unsalvageable. Gold Source really likes its grids. Stick to the grid, or suffer the consequences. You can change the size of the grid by using the bracket keys to scale it up or down, and these buttons here if you're a pussy. I tend to work on either 16 or 8 units myself. Let's flatten the brush a little bit to make it into a floor. Use the views to draw some walls. Raise them up to about 256 units. You got a small room with floors, walls, and the ceiling. Whatever you do when you're designing in your room, please make sure that there are no gaps that lead into the void. These are known as leaks. It's like outer space. You can't let it get into the level or else you're gonna have a huge problem and everyone's gonna die. Seal it up. We'll learn more about leaks in a different video. So you got a room, but it looks like shit. This is where our WAD files come in handy. They contain all these funny pictures that we're supposed to use for our levels. Press the browse button on the texture section. Now you got a fat fucking juicy list of textures to pick from. FLR tends to find some decent floor textures. Pick one, double click it. Now it's your active texture. Go over here to the texture tool. While this is up, you can right click any surface you want. Now the surface looks like it has the texture and that's fucked up. Oh God, it's so cold. Ah! Look up some walls, texture the walls. Look up a ceiling, texture the ceiling. Now it doesn't look like horse shit. You can mess around with these settings to make it do stuff. Change the alignment, rotate it, make it fit. I tend to use the top or bottom setting tool or sometimes stretch if I want a texture to fit the surface perfectly. Ideally though, you don't want to have to change the scale of most of your textures. When you stretch out your textures, it tends to look a little bit like dog shit and is an easy tell that somebody's an amateur mapper. In mods like the core, the developers have been careful to design their textures to perfectly fit their brushwork to make sure that none of their textures stretch. Fitted to the grid. And that means when we go back into hammer, it fits the brushwork pretty sweetly. So our room has walls, floors, and a ceiling, but there's no one in this room to appreciate it yet. So there's this list here on the right side of the editor, and it's just a bunch of bullshit that you can put into your levels. The bare minimum that you need is a player and a light. So choose info player start and place it somewhere in your level by clicking. Then adjust it on the grid to make sure that it's where you want it to be. Now we need a light source. Look for a light. Ah, there's one. Put it in the level. Double click on it, and there's a ton of settings. They're pretty intuitive. I just want to change the color. The first three numbers are the color, and the fourth is the brightness. I'm gonna make it blue because I'm an asshole. Hey, there we go. Now let's build a map. To do this, we have to press F9. Press OK. This causes is the computer gnomes to start building the level for you. Don't worry, they'll tell you when they're done. Boot the game up. Open the console and type map and then the name of your map. <laughs> All right, it works and it's cool, but there's one more thing that we need to discuss that is not just an ordinary brush or an entity. So you want to make a door. <laughs> All right, I'll humor you for now. Let me set up some walls and make a player size slot. Door time. Put a block in there. Look up a door texture. Texture it. Now it's a door. Now it's time for the handiest keyboard command in the entirety of Hammer. Control T. This turns a brush into an entity. It's called a brush entity. They do all kinds of things. There's a pretty long list of possible things this particular brush could be, but I don't give a shit. It's a door. Fuck you. There are a lot of settings for it, and they're all pretty intuitive. Like with regular entities. I want it to go up, so I'm gonna go to this compass and set it to up. I also want it to stick out two units from the ceiling when it opens, so I'll set the lip to two. Compile the map again. Boot the game. Let's check this door out. Now it goes up. Woo! <laughs> This is the second to last tool I'm gonna show you. Let's say you've just made this big wall and you're like, ah, shit, I wanna put a vent in there. It'd be stupid to try and move your brushes around to make a slot for the vent, so let's use the clip tool instead. Select the wall, select the clip tool. Draw a line on this grid here. You can see it in the 3D editor. One side looks red, which means it'll get deleted if we do that, so don't do that. Instead, click the clip tool again until both sides are white. One clip, two clip. Select this brush. One clip, two clip. Now we have a square hole. Let's turn it into a vent. Find a vent texture. Put it on each side of the object. Control T, baby. Woo! 
I want it to be breakable, so I'll make it a funk breakable. I'll make it metal. This texture has transparency built into it, but it has to be turned on a certain way. So I'll go to render mode and I'll set it to solid, then 255. Now it's see-through. Lay down a crowbar and boot up the game. I pick up the crowbar, I go through the vent, I open the door from behind. Game of the year. All right, here's where we separate the boys from the girls. The piss bitches from the fuck chat. I wanna make a fucking ruckus. I want these walls to be diagonal. I'm gonna use the clip tool from before and put them in half. Then I select the vertex manipulation tool and I grab my edge vertices. On the grid, I'll drag them out. From here, then here, then here. Looks pretty cool, huh? But this is only a slight hint of the power of the vertex manipulation tool. The amount of work that can be done with it is wild. You can make some pretty absurd shit using this tool, but it's not for the faint of heart. See this cube? Watch what happens when I drag this corner. Now it's all fucked up. It's glitched. The map is not happy. This abomination has to go. Press Alt-P and Jackie Boy will tell you what's your fucking problem. Then you can get the editor to fix it and it'll become something horribly unrecognizable. This tool should be used with caution, but with it, for now, you should be able to use it lightly, for practice. Uh, later on, I'll have a video on how to use it to make terrain with a special celebrity guest star. So those are the basics of how to do this shit. You can figure it out from there, have fun playing with it, and if you get stuck on something, there's a lot of material to read online to figure it out. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to support the channel, and feel free to comment whatever specific shit you want me to talk about. Uh, here's my Discord in case you want to send me your maps, and I'll check them out no matter how amateur they might be, or how professional they might be. I'll I'll play anything, I don't care. Till then, farewell and good